I recorded this whole video earlier only to realize when I went to go take out the memory card somehow the mic wasn't all the way plugged in. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I must have unplugged it somehow after I was done recording. Transferred the footage to the computer. No sound. You should come rolling my sh Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Riche from ChaseAndRider.com. In this video, we're going to talk about 10 little details that you can't afford to get wrong. In other words, if you want to be the best dressed man in any room, can't skip these details. So number one is shine your shoes. It's obvious if you watch my channel that I'm a champion of nice shoes. I think about my shoes first whenever I'm thinking about my outfit. Anybody can buy a nice pair of shoes, but it's how you take care of them. So if we all somewhere wearing nice shoes, what's going to set you apart is if your shoes are shine and the other person's shoes aren't. I'm a mirror shine guy myself, but you don't have to do a mirror shine if you don't like that. It takes a long time, so I can understand that. But you just wanna make sure that your shoes are clean. Number two, speaking of shoes, is your sock choices. I'm sure you all heard the saying that the first thing that women notice on a man are his shoes. Right next to the shoes are the socks, and that's where a lot of men go wrong. Being stylish is completely different than being loud. I think a lot of guys think that in order for them to get compliments, they have to be loud. Nothing could be further from the truth, man. Dressing well is like an orchestra that's so in sync and in perfect harmony that you can't tell which instrument is doing what. So if you're wearing some nice shoes but you have some socks that's screaming, hey, look at me, just throws everything off. But the crazy part is most of the guys that wear the crazy socks, they don't usually wear nice shoes, which is even more confusing because you're calling extra attention to your feet and you're not even wearing nice shoes. If you're not sure what I mean by your choice of socks, personally, I love solid colored socks. But if it has a subtle pattern, I'm fine with that too. What I don't like are the loud socks. And by loud, I mean multiple colors all at once. I like burgundy socks. I like money green socks. So I have no problem with colors. I just hate when all the colors are there together. And by that, I'm talking about those striped colored socks. Let me give you an example of loud versus stylish. A sock with pin dots, stylish. On the other hand, a sock with polka dots, Kind of loud. You see the difference? When you're trying to be the best dressed man in any room, you want somebody to compliment the whole ensemble, not just one thing. If somebody keeps talking about just one thing, usually there's something wrong. Number three of the 10 little details that you can't afford to get wrong, and we're still going to stay with the bottom half, and that's to cuff your trousers. This is one of the details I usually get pushed back about from guys that aren't into classic menswear. I think a lot of guys, when they think cuffs, they're thinking about khaki pants that you can get at Macy's that already come with cuffs. Those aren't the type of cuffs that I'm talking about. I'm talking about two inch cuffs that every trouser should have. There are some exceptions, like if a guy is really short, maybe he doesn't want two inch cuffs because that might make his leg appear like they're shorter. Therefore, for somebody under 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, I would recommend maybe an inch and a half cuff. But besides that, I feel like two inch cuffs look good on everyone. And there are other ways to make your legs look longer. We'll talk about that later. The thing about cuffs to me is not only they look stylish, but they also play a function. The function is they make the bottom of your pants heavier. That way they drape cleanly on your shoes. I couldn't imagine wearing a pair of pants without cuffs on them. The only pants that I have that do not have cuffs are tuxedo pants. But somebody commented recently that if it's a really serious suit, let's say a charcoal suit like what I'm wearing right now, they shouldn't have cuffs on them. Maybe that was the thinking back in the days. But trousers without cuffs to me always look like something is missing. And these things are just classic menswear principles. All the guys that I follow on Instagram that are into the same thing that I'm into always cuff their trousers. So I can understand if at first they look a little odd to you, but if you really want to dress well, definitely consider cuffing your trousers. And once again, we're talking about two inch cuffs. Number four is to wear a pocket square. This is one of the little details that a lot of guys either overlook or they do it wrong. Overlooking it means they just don't use a pocket square at all. Doing it wrong means they're wearing the wrong pocket square with their tie. The idea is not to match the square to the tie. The idea is for them to complement each other. And this is where a lot of guys go wrong. Usually, you can see that they're trying to match the pocket square with the tie. The square and the tie being the same color family. And that's not what you want. For those of you that don't wear pocket squares at all because you're not exactly sure on how to pair with your tie, 
I would recommend that you at least wear white pocket squares and then you can work your way up from that. But what you really want to do, actually, I made a video about this a few years ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it somewhere up here. I'll also include it in the description. You want to take a secondary color from your tie and then you want to find that color as either the main color or even a secondary color in the pocket square. So for example, today I'm wearing a maroon tie and that tie has some light green accents. In my pocket square, the main color is light green. So therefore, the pocket square is bringing out the light green in the tie. So it's not really hard, but it's also not simple in the beginning. But definitely check out that video where I went into it in a lot more details. But definitely do not neglect your pocket square. The jacket's pocket is there for a reason, man. Use it. Number five is to make sure that your jacket has wider lapels. To me, your jacket's lapel should be anywhere between three and a half inches to four and a half inches, depending on your style and also depending on the width of your tie. They don't have to be the same exact width. They can be about an inch apart, that's perfectly fine, but you don't really wanna be wearing a four inch tie with a two inch lapel. That just doesn't really make any sense. Personally, I wear a four and a half inch lapel and all my ties are three and a half inches. I have a broader chest, so I like the wider lapels, but I feel like your lapel should be at least three and a half inches. One thing that I see a lot are these razor thin lapels. And I get it because lapels, if you're not really into suits like that, it's probably something that you're not even really going to be paying attention to. If you're looking at a suit as a novice, I don't think the lapel is what's really going to catch your attention. So a lot of people are going to look at the color, if there are any patterns. Those are the things that you're going to see first. So if you're wearing a jacket with really thin lapels, that really dates the jacket. Versus if you're wearing a jacket that has a four inch lapel or a four and a half like I wear, 10 years from now, I'll still be able to wear this jacket. And that's a Neapolitan style that's been around since forever. So I don't ever have to worry about what I'm wearing going out of style because it's timeless. Versus if you're wearing really thin lapels, that's a fashion trend. See what I'm saying? So be mindful of your lapels when you're shopping for suits. Number six, and this one is about your tie knot. Once again, you wanna be stylish and not loud. And I see a lot of guys walking around with these humongous tie knots. That's why I always recommend a foreign hand knot when it comes to tying your tie. So when you walk into a room and everybody wants to comment about your tie because you're wearing a really big tie knot, that's not really what you want. It's not really a compliment. It's more like, damn, this is so in my face. I gotta say something about it. So whenever you see me, I'm in a foreign hand knot. And also just make sure that when you tie in that foreign hand knot that you include a dimple in the tie. There's really no reason for you not to have a dimple in your tie. You're just going the extra mile. And this is not something that really takes a bunch of extra time. As you tie in your tie, just make sure there's a dimple in it. Those are the little things that's going to put you where you want to be. If you want to dress well, you definitely want to make sure that you're doing the little things. Number seven, you should highly consider wearing pleated trousers if you're not already. Pleats is another thing that I get a lot of pushback about from the non-classic menswear crowd. Pleats is one of those things that's been around since the beginning. And just like cuffs, not only they look good, they also play a function, or multiple functions for that matter. Number one, since there are more material in the front of the trousers when you have pleats, they actually open when you sit down, giving you more room. And then when you stand back up, they're closed by themselves. Number two, Remember I said there are ways for you to make your legs look longer? You can do that with pleats. And that's because when we're talking about pleats, the crease of the trousers starts right underneath the waistband. Versus flat front trousers, the crease starts around your thigh. So visually, when you're wearing pleats, it starts under the waistband going all the way down. Therefore, it looks like your legs are actually longer. Pleats is something that you can't afford not to have on your trousers. And once again, I know a lot of guys are going to say, but I don't like pleats. That's cool. I mean, have you tried them? If you try them, they don't work for you. That's one thing because I'm not the one that's going to be wearing the trousers. You are, so you gotta make sure you're comfortable. But all I'm asking is for you to be open-minded. Pleats, suspenders, cuffs, those are all things that's been around since the beginning. But somehow a lot of guys think that it's a trend that's no longer in. We're talking about classic menswear. Everything is in and it's not going anywhere. So pleats, you should definitely consider them if you wanna be well-dressed. And also pleats are a lot more fun. Do you want reverse pleats, which are the pleats that are probably the most popular? They face the same direction as your pockets. Or do you want forward pleats? Those are the ones that face towards the fly. You want double pleats, single pleats. As far as the function, it doesn't really matter which one you get. They all play the same position. But those are things to consider, for example, if you're getting a suit made, what kind of pleats do you want? And it all comes down to preference. Personally, most of my trousers probably have 
single reverse pleats. And that's because a lot of the off the rack trousers that I use, like Spian McKay, Natalino, those come in reverse pleats. But when I get a suit custom made or trousers custom made, I like to opt for maybe forward pleats just to have something different. Number eight, in the 10 little details that you can afford to get wrong is wearing a dress watch. A dress watch is one of those things that really tie everything together. But I think a lot of guys, especially the ones that are just starting out, they don't really realize there's a difference between a dress watch and a tool watch. So to them, the bigger the watch, the better because it's going to call more attention to itself. Being loud again, that's not what you want. If you want a nice dress watch, they may not really notice it if your arms are by your side because once again, your shirt's cuff is going to go over it like it's supposed to. But trust me, they will notice it. You don't have to wear a crazy big watch like you're a rapper because you want people to notice it. I think a lot of guys just think about name brands when it comes to watches too, as opposed to the style of watch for the occasion. There are watches to wear with tuxedos, there are watches to wear with tailoring, and there are watches to wear casually. At the same time, watches are a very personal thing. So in some cases, somebody might be able to get away with a tool watch with tailoring, depending on the size of the watch. But I always think that a dress watch looks better with tailoring than any other kind of watch. And I feel like that's why dress watches exist. But one thing I realized, especially from guys that are just starting out, they're not thinking about dress watch and tool watch. They're just thinking about which one is going to get the most attention. As much as I love watches, I don't want my shirt cuffs to be stuck behind them. I want my shirt cuff to go over them. And then once I sit down, if I'm talking, then you'll be able to clearly see the watch. But like I said, if you're wearing a nice watch, people are going to notice it anyway, so. And this is speaking from experience. My first watch was big as hell. It was a dress watch too, but it was about 42 millimeters. To me, the sweet spot for dress watch in most cases is 36 to 38 millimeters. And the reason why I say in most cases is because it also depends on the size of your wrist. I think the average wrist size is around seven inches. So 36, 38 millimeters, that's where you wanna be for a dress watch in my opinion. I have a smaller wrist, mine is six and a half. So my watches range from 34 to 38 millimeters, my dress watches. And of course, if you have a bigger wrist, like eight inches, maybe a 40 millimeter is going to look a lot better than let's say a 36 millimeter. You gotta try it out and see what works. But the bottom line is you wanna make sure that your shirt cuff is going over the watch. Number nine. So you can say a lot of things that I mentioned before, like pleats, cuffs, it's subjective. Although I think that they look better than the alternative, but you can still say it's subjective. Especially once again, if you're not from a classic menswear background. But the next thing that I'm going to mention here for number nine is not subjective at all. And that's the length of your jacket. So this one is not up for debate, man. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. No pun intended. Your jacket should be able to cover your whole seat. Once again, this one is not debatable. I do not want to see your ass when you're walking away, if you're a guy that is. And this is a trend that I've been seeing a lot. Maybe it's not really like that in real life. But on Instagram, I've been seeing that a lot where guys are walking around with short ass jackets. I mean, what are we doing exactly? How is that flattering? And it's crazy too, man. I saw a video on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, man, if you're not following me on there, you're really missing out. It's a good time in there. But I reposted this on my Instagram where a guy made a video saying that when you're getting your suit altered, you wanna make sure that you shorten the jacket so that you're showing about an inch of ass. He really said that. And I know you're probably thinking that this had to be a young dude, right? Somebody in their 20s that made that video. This dude is older than me. What really bothered me about that video, if somebody likes for the jacket to be shorter, even though it's wrong, to you, man. But for you to actually make a video where you coming off as some kind of authority and telling people they need to show an inch of ass, I have a serious problem with that, man. And no man has ever been considered well-dressed in a short jacket. As you can see, I'm very passionate about that one. It's a real pet peeve. And number 10, this one is one of the mistakes that I see a lot out there. And I think it's because a lot of guys don't even realize it. And that's the dreaded triangle. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you know what the dreaded triangle is. The dreaded triangle is when your suit jacket is buttoned and then I can still see your shirt underneath the buttoning point. What I mean is, imagine this is the buttoning point and this is the top of the waistband of your trousers. And between the two of them, I can see your shirt. And that happens because of two reasons. Number one, the buttoning point of the jacket is too high. Number two, the rise of the trousers are too low. Typically it's both. 
And this is not an easy thing to pick up, especially if you never heard of it before. Because if you're wearing a suit, most people are going to comment on how nice the suit is, how nice your shoes are. Unless they're really into it like that, a lot of times they're not even really going to notice the dreaded triangle. But it's one of those things that once you notice it the first time, you'll never be able to unsee it. So how do you fix the dreaded triangle? Well, you can't really fix it. There's nothing that you can really do to the suit to alter it, to make it work. The way you fix it is by being cognizant of that when you're buying a suit. I think the first mistake is a lot of men think that your natural waist is at your hips, where your natural waist is actually where your belly button is. So you wanna make sure that the rise of the trousers are high enough for the waistband to be around your belly button. The second thing, you wanna make sure that the buttoning point of the jacket is also around your belly button, maybe like an inch above your belly button. Therefore, the buttoning point will be right here, about an inch above your belly button, and then the trousers will be right here, right around your belly button. There's no room in between for the shirt to peek through. This is something that can destroy your look, no matter how good everything else is. And unfortunately, the dreaded triangle is one of those things that your tailor will not be able to fix. So these are the 10 little details that you can't afford to get wrong when you're trying to be well-dressed. A lot of them are things that you can easily overlook, especially if you're just starting out. Back in 2013, when I was trying to learn this stuff, there wasn't a YouTube channel like this for me to watch. So that's why I'm trying to provide you with the shortcuts so you don't have to go through the same thing that I went through when I was trying to put all that information together. Anyway, wrist check. Today I'm wearing my 1969 King Seiko. That's the KS45-7000 if you're into watches. I have to say this is probably my favorite watch. For the shoes, I'm wearing my Burgundy Oxford from Women Bespoke, one of the nicest shoes that I own. And yeah, man, that was the 10 little details that you can't afford to get wrong. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe, or everybody gonna think that you're a hater. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.